background is definitely familiar to my next guest as she is the uh, co-producer from this fine fellow's new CD, E-Music, Pete Escovito, longtime favorite here to the upper room. And my next guest, she's uh, just created so much great music over the years. I wanted to thank her first off by uh, giving myself and a lot of listeners out there just some great songs and great performances. She is world-renowned drummer and percussionist, Sheila E. And she has a new album out, which is entitled Rites of Passage, which she recorded with her band, The E-Train. And without further delay, we are going to welcome to the Up Room with Joe Kelly, Sheila E. How you doing, Sheila? Fine. How are you? I'm doing great. And uh, about time the E-Train got that, that CD out. It's, it's real nice and uh, long time coming, right? Yes, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Now, um, you're working uh, on that album, Rites of Passage, with um, talented folks. Yes. One of uh, the guys who stopped by here a couple weeks ago, Mr. Eric Leeds. Great. And uh, what, what was going on uh, with the E-Train in the studio? Uh, well, at that particular time when we recorded the album, um, <clears throat> you know, we decided to do it. We recorded it at my home studio in, uh, at that time in Woodland Hills. And... Um, we had a, a, a really great time, you know, we, we got all the guys together and um, I told them, you know, it'd take probably about a week and we would take our time and, uh, you know, just chill and have a, have a, have a good time. And one what, what of, I think, the uh, things you've done on this record, I don't, correct me if I'm wrong, is that uh, you were definitely giving the spotlight to a lot of the people in your band, right? Oh, I always do. Mm-hmm. Yes. Some of your longtime collaborators... Your your brother's in there, Peter Michael. Yeah. yeah. Right. How, how's he doing? He's doing really good. Mm -hmm. He's doing uh, a lot of uh, producing, actually, and uh, writing, and uh, doing some television, uh, uh, writing for television as well. So he's been uh, very active since he's moved down in Los Angeles as well. And uh, I heard something today. Someone sent me an email today. Is the family moving down to L.A.? Yes, they are. Yeah. They'll be moving here uh, Wednesday. Oh, Wednesday, okay. Yeah. You, you're going to have a big welcoming party? Not yet. Not yet, right? <laughs> I don't think they want anyone to know where they live, but we are going to have a, a huge party, but it'll it'll take a couple of weeks because it's going to take them at least that long to unpack all the percussion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you're going to uh, have some farewell performances up in uh, Northern California, right? Yeah, I think uh, March 30th and 31st. Right. I'm pretty sure at uh, Kimball's or Carnival, Kimball's one of the places. Yeah, Kimball's Carnival, that's what I have. Yeah. Yeah. Now, working with your dad in the studio, uh, Pete Escovito, you were the co-producer, right? Uh, the producer, yeah. Producer on that? He says co-producer, but I say producer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, since I'm talking to you, I'm going to go with your your version of it, so, yeah. Um, when you're working with your dad in the studio and giving him guidance, uh, how easy and how tough is it? Actually, it was very, very easy because, uh, you know, growing up listen, listening to my dad perform, uh, knowing what type of music he loves and who he is about as a musician and an entertainer, there wasn't really much for me to do. Um, I allowed him to be himself, and I think that's the, the part of producing is being able to let the artists themselves shine in their own light and mm -hmm. not have him, you know record songs that really weren't a part of him or have him to sing songs that really didn't mean anything to him. Um, so, you know, he I, I thought he did a wonderful job. He had a great time. And um, he said to me, I mean, which was, I think, really wonderful to hear from your dad, but uh, that it was the most fun he had had in years to be able to do an album like this because it was something he had always dreamed of. Wow, and, that's uh, high praise. Yeah, it was very, very nice for him to, to say that. Now, when uh, when your family gets together and uh, you're all virtuosos on, on the uh, percussion, do, does anybody in the family stand out in certain instruments? Um, well, the first thing what happens is, because my dad plays timbales, congas, bongos, uh, we all play about the same, and he the only thing he doesn't play a lot of, which we all do, is drums. So the problem that we have is when he we get together and he puts a set list together for his band, we sit there arguing who's going to play what on what song because right. 
everyone wants to take a solo on this song on this instrument and so we kind of have to discuss you know who's going to do what and that's the funny part is sitting there listening to us figure out who's going to play what now who usually wins out i do you do <laughs> <laughs> I, I always like like uh the portion of your show when you're with your family you guys are knocking each other around yeah on stage yeah. there yeah yeah verbally and physically yes <laughs> yeah, right <laughs> you you want to get into a track off uh rites of passage sure you know, I got uh, In Perfect Time queued up, which is uh, also has a good friend of yours, Lynn Mabry, on that. Absolutely, yes. And uh, Lynn Mabry, of course, from uh, folks remember from the Funk Days, Parliament Funkadelic. She's your business partner, right? Yes, yeah. and my manager. Yeah. And your manager. And we got to say thanks to Lynn for hooking us up together. Yes, and, uh, thank you. You were working uh, with Renato on this one, right? Yes. Great keyboard player. Yes, he is. Excellent. Any E-Train dates uh possibly in the future uh yes possibly um we're working on some things as we speak and uh it's just that it's been a little busy for me mm -hmm. uh being a leader because i also have five other groups as well as this yeah. one yeah we'll, we'll definitely get into talking about some of those one, one of my uh favorite groups fifth element right and uh we'll talk more on what sheila's got going on she's uh has a lot of projects as you could probably guess but first we'll listen to uh sheila e and the E-Train, this is called Imperfect Time, right here. on. That's music from my special guest this afternoon, Sheila E. And uh, that is the new single from her Rites of Passage release. And the single is called In Perfect Time. And we welcome once again to the Upper Room with Joe Kelly, Sheila E. And thanks for uh, staying around. I know it's awful tough, uh, you know, putting the interviews and also uh, studio work and various projects. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Now, we talked... Um, we were talking off air about uh, coming out to uh, New York City, and you were uh, at David Letterman for a whole week, right? Right. Now, right. What, what was that like uh, sitting in with the band? Oh, I love sitting in with the uh, Paul Schaefer band. I think they're one of the best bands on television, actually. Mm -hmm. um, it was a lot of fun. We were, I actually played the show on my birthday, so that was a treat for me. It was like December 12th, and um, we were only scheduled to do one night. And uh, after the show, Dave came up and said, you know, we got to have you the rest of the week. So we already had a week of press and, and other television shows to do the Today Show, and we did a lot of magazine and print. So we had to reschedule, uh, change the schedule around, and, which was great for me. And uh, we had a wonderful time, so we were there the entire week. And you got back to uh, L.A. and recovered a bit, right? No, there wasn't much time to no, recover. No, not at no, all. No, but, you know, we got to keep working. Yeah, got to keep doing what you're doing. And, um, you know, we, we should mention to uh, the folks listening out there that, uh, you know, Fifth Element, which is uh, one of your projects working with uh, Rhonda Smith, Kat Dyson. Mm hmm You going to get in the studio for that? Yeah, we're going to get in the studio very soon. I have uh, Rhonda Smith, Kat, Kathleen Dyson, Renato Neto, the same keyboard player. Also, Eddie M playing sax and right. singing and Lynn Mabry on vocals and myself playing drums. Now, what, what kind of feel to uh, is Fifth, Fifth Element? Uh, Fifth Element is, is more acoustic. Uh, it's not as much Latin, Latin jazz, but uh, it's variety with more vocals. Um, we do some songs like the Layla, Layla Hathaway and, and Joe Sample song that uh, they did. We do, you know, songs like that with more vocals. Um, we actually did uh, the Garth Brooks tune when he was Chris, was a Chris Gaines. Uh, so we're doing things like that, and, and I come out to the front not only just playing drums, but we use uh, a couple of little drum machines and things like that to make it acoustically different, having Rhonda play upright bass and mm -hmm. uh, Kathleen playing acoustic guitar. and uh, So it's really, really nice. It's a great band. Now, inside your, your uh, liner notes, which are, are real nice, a lot of positivity in there, um, your picture with a guitar. Mm -hmm. uh, how proficient on the guitar? Do you, do you play? Do you play a lot? No, no, I used to play a long time ago, a little bit, and really, I don't really play if you call playing James Brown chords, which are the easiest thing to play in the world. Uh -huh. You know, if I play guitar, it's got to be in one of those keys. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it makes it fun. I mean, I love to play, you know, the James Brown chords. I can play that all day long. Oh, yeah. But uh, as far as anything else, you can forget about it. I leave it up to the g other people. Oh, they're nice pictures, though, with the guitar, though. Yeah. Thank you very much. Now, um, some, some of your uh, 
great touring days were with uh, Prince back, uh, Son of the Times, and Love Sexy. I wanted to know if uh, you had any favorite uh, recordings you uh, you worked on in, in those Paisley Park days. Anything that comes to mind that you're really, really proud of? Uh, the the only thing that comes to mind that I really loved at the one point in time, and it was at the very beginning when we did uh, <clears throat> like Dorothy Parker and Starfish and Coffee. Mm-hmm. That that meant and uh, Venus de Milo. Um, those three songs stick out a lot to me. Right. Yeah. How, how about tour wise? Any? Uh, did you have a favorite tour? Um. No, it was all really good. I mean, all my tours have been great with everyone. I've right. learned so much from all the artists, from George Duke to Herbie Hancock to Billy Cobham. You know, I went on tour with Stephen Stills. I mean, the list goes on and on. So it's it's I've played probably every type of music except for maybe polka and country. I'm not sure. Jim, Jimmy Sturr isn't ringing up your phone? <laughs> <laughs> no. Not yet. No. Well, you know, you do a lot of work with the youth, uh, and you've done some drum clinics throughout the years. In fact, you did some in November, right? Yes, I did, with uh, Alex Acuna. Are you finding the young kids uh, getting into uh, playing real instruments? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think it's coming back again, which is great. Uh, we found a lot of young, really young, like starting at six years old, playing percussion. They, you know, we had them come up and play, and I, I just started giving them, you know, the instruments. We're out doing clinics, but also <clears throat> um, trying to promote my line of, of drums for kids called the Sheila E. Player Series for Kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's with myself at Toka Command Music. And it's really great uh, because they allowed me to to be able to do this and I've been wanting to do it for so long and they're just a great company and they've been helping me uh, put a line together just for kids and they're not toys they're real drums miniature size of actually what I use already um, and it's been really wonderful to see that evolve right now because really there are a lot of kids that really want to play and some of the drums are just too big mm -hmm. and that's basically how I learned how to play I was three three years old and by five I had already played my first show with my dad right but I mean I you know I had to stand on a stool to play so right. these drums for kids now they start at the age of three like bongos and stuff that we have in hand toys the kids can play at three we also have drums starting at six where you can stand up and play with a stand, you know, congas on the stand, bongos, um, that are just great for them that are their size, and they'll feel good about playing them. Now, is there a place where people can uh, find out more information, or is it going to be available soon? It, they're available in the music stores, and if they don't have them, you can ask them to order them, which okay. would be great. If they don't, that would get the stores to order them. And that's the Toka percussion line for kids, right? Yes. Okay. It's called the Sheila E. Player Series. Okay. Yes. The Sheila yes, E. Uh, Player Series, right? Right. And they yes, won't go bro and they won't go broke, right? Oh no no no. No, I oh, mean no. price wise, price wise. No no no. Yeah, it's so it's very good. reasonable. That's cool. No, we had to take yeah. that in consideration. Absolutely. That that's great. No, it only costs you a couple of million dollars. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, that's all right. No, that's very after, cheap. After that first royalty check, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, a lot of the money really is what we're doing. Which I'm glad you said that is a lot of money that we're raising. Uh, I started a foundation with Lynn maybe my manager, called Little Angel Bunnies, and uh, these are for kids, um, mainly for, for children's charity, any children's charity, but most of the charities that we've been donating money to has been the abused and abandoned kids. And um, Toga has allowed us to, every concert we've been playing, we will raise money. We ask to buy a raffle ticket if you want for $2. You can give more if you want. And what we do is we have a raffle for a uh, a new uh, uh, line of percussion that you can choose from, you know, bongos, congas, or whatever, hand percussion. We give it away <clears throat> for whoever wins. And all the money that we raise that night, we give to the the charity in that city. Mm -hmm. uh, and most of them have been abused and abandoned. I mean, that's where we're really looking at right now. And um, it's been wonderful to be able to give to these charities because there's so many kids right now that really need our help. And... Uh, it's, I, th I think it's really wonderful, and I'm glad that, you know, a lot of the fans, we're not expecting them to, but they have very much uh, supported us on this and, and given a lot of money to help raise uh, money for these charities, so it's been great. Now, before we, we uh, left off uh, t 
after the interview, I just wanted to thank you uh, for the positive spiritual message on this record. And uh, how did you come to uh, want to express it in such a way? Musically or verbally? Mm, a little of both. <laughs> Um, I don't know. There's just a peace inside right now, and, and I'm I'm very happy with with uh, all that I've done in my life, and that if I died today, you know, or tomorrow, that I know that I've done something really good. And um, you know, I have the Lord in my life, Jesus Christ, and He's saved me many, many times, every day, mm-hmm. and uh, I owe it all to Him. God gets the glory every day, so. If that's what you're reading and, and you're hearing in the music and what you're reading, then that means a lot because that comes from him. Right. So nice words from Sheila E. And uh, she's given us, you know, from, from the late, I got the album with you and your pops, uh, Queros. Oh, great. That's one of my favorite tracks you guys did. And, uh, Thank you. Just continue to success. And sounds like you have a real nice team out in uh, California. And, uh, Absolutely. When you come eastward with... One of the bands, I know you got five bands, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll have to stop by the studios. We're moving into new studios this summer, so... Uh, Great, we would yeah. love to come by. And uh, how, how about another track? Uh, okay. I've got uh, Paragon, which I'm really digging the last couple of weeks. Great. This this was a band collaboration, right? Yes, it was. It actually happened spontaneously. We were uh, <clears throat> setting up the headphone mix, and everyone had their headphones, and we're getting sound, and... Uh, Someone started playing one thing, I started playing another, and I said, all right, hold on, turn the tape on. I said, let's record this and make it a song. So we did it in about 20 minutes. And it sounded real nice at the CD. Sheila E. and the E-Train, Rites of Passage. You could go to SheilaE.com, or uh, you can go to the Concord Records site, which is the label uh, working on distribution for this and all the online ordering. So uh, it's...